Hey guys, it's Ted Bogert. Welcome back to the Ted Show. Oh, you know how much I love art. Anything in the arts, I'm a big fan of. And today we have an incredibly talented young man. Emmanuel Wilson is on the show today. Not Emmanuel Lewis, as we yeah, talked about you. before we went live. Uh, and we're going to talk fine art that speaks. He has amazing talent. VisionArt7.com is his website. And we're going to get his story and his journey and learn more about what he does and all the good that he does in the world. Welcome, Emmanuel. How are you doing? Doing great. I'm uh, doing better than I'm on your show. This is not. You look um, good. Your background looks so yeah. much better than mine. Well, you look amazing. You got some art back there. It's all thank good. You. Thank um, you. So I was telling you earlier, I just got back from some art show that I was at. I love the arts. I love talent. I can't draw a stick figure. Um, barely can write a, a straight line. You, on the other hand, have this God given. This gift. Yes. Uh, so people want to know words and story, which we talked about. So tell them a little bit about you. Oh, my coffee to get me keep me pepped up. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, born and raised uh, in Seneca, South Carolina. It's for those it's on the East Coast, um, and uh, just really had a love for art at a young age. My uh, parents actually got me a uh, horse a number of coloring book. I was third, about third, fourth grade. They saw me drawing on the floor and they got that. They helped me out, they encouraged me. Neither one of them had the gift, but they uh, saw the gift that it was given to me and uh, they just didn't, and really encouraged it. And that graduated on into um, learning how to paint seventh grade under instructor Robert Spencer, who's still local. And uh, graduated from there, was moved forward with a t shirt design contest that uh, ninth grade that I won for a local Apple festival and it was marketed and it sold it and all that stuff. Then we fast forward to high school where uh, that's where I was in gift and talent all four years. And uh, under my instructor there, uh, Frederick Edgerton. And uh, so I was selected to be in that. And that's when I started just growing and learning in different mediums and uh, realized that probably acrylic, acrylic was going to be my best, Medium let's success. let's talk about that. Let's go back a little bit. So it's one thing, like a lot of parents tell their kids, "You're talented," right? Um, and we love our children. We're all lying, most of us. Um, so <laughs> That's wrong to say. <laughs> you know, it's the truth, parents out there. We, we we tell them, "Oh, that's pretty," and we have no idea what they just painted. However, your situation is different. So your parents saw the gift. What was that like, though, as you as you're growing up and you got to acrylic, which I want to talk about? How did you figure out what modes? How did you learn to go from drawing to painting? It sounds like you had mentors along the way. Uh, I had one particular mentor for about five months outside of school. I had some private lessons and uh, most of it was really through my class time. So it was almost like I was really a student of uh just what I was learning and I'd go home and I put time in. That was outside of being a full-time athlete too, star athlete. Sure, let's talk about, we totally breezed over that. That's yeah. right, you weren't, you weren't just painting, not that that's a just, but you right. you had multiple interests. I did, I did. I um, Art actually balanced out me as an athlete. It uh, really developed my mind, it uh, broadened my perspective. And as a kid, you know, I, athlete playing basketball and art, I also had an interest for uh, just things overseas, interest as far as uh, cultures, and and I kind of read and dabbled, but it balanced things out, um, even to the point to where uh, just perspective of having a backup and uh, merging that, you know, uh, even my high school coach, he uh, gave me an opportunity to design the stools for the high school, so our varsity team, while I was on the team, you know, you come in for halftime or before and you have your stool, you put it out of locker. So he had everybody, you know, get their signature on paper. And then my art teacher, uh, we silk screen and set it up for silk screen. And he helped me, he showed me how to silk screen each stool. And, uh, and then also designing a t-shirt for one of our tournaments. And uh, it's all these archives that remind me of where I've come from, but merging just my creative talent and art and then sports and, prom committee, I think my junior year, I uh, helped design the prom. So it gave me, 
it gave me a broad uh, spectrum. And I actually did what you were doing in high school as a class where we brought announcements and uh, I had my own TV show and we were graded for posture, etiquette, lighting. And um, so we had that class going on too, where we, each one of us had a uh, anchorman, had a cameraman. And we had to go into the community after school, find stories, get with that cameraman and it was editing. Nice. Yeah. Uh, I still have some of that footage and I'm going to get put on flash drive, but all of that actually gave me a, a broad spectrum growing up and uh, values and uh, really helped me to be able to merge to conversate. Was it difficult to balance that? Because there are a lot of things going on in your life as somebody in high school. I know. Uh, it, it, uh, it kind of was. I, I think about it like going to my, my brother where he stuck with one thing and end up doing that professionally. I had so many different things. I had so much inside of me that I wanted to try to, uh, you know, do them well. But it was challenging at times. I kept my grades up. I kept my grades up. And uh, but uh, when I did just, you decide to focus on one more than the other? I'd have to say probably my junior year, my junior year. Because um, in our senior year, we have what we call a concentration. Each person in the class, they have four original pieces that sent off actually uh, to where you, that you graded on the scale of how much, uh, well, how much scholarship money you'll get. And um, so that's when I really started kind of honing in and thinking about what I wanted to do, and what art school and things of that nature. Um, life, you know, took its course. I uh, never did get to college to take any uh, uh, art classes or anything like that. And, uh, and then basketball stopped right there too, my first year or so. But I just had a passion. My parents didn't have to really push me and encourage me to to uh, do art and to create and um, had a kind of opportunity in Charleston, seventh grade too, where it was a, a big festival. And it was through a program where I got to set up with other kids. So. I was able to kind of um, really just experience it's just, you know, summer program, our um, governor's school for the arts at Furman University. And Maya Angelou was there and got to wow. see her, meet her in person. And that was really inspiring. Got a photo. And so things like that, that really helped me to um, just stay inspired, see the value of my gift. Um, Cause sometimes as an athlete, uh, being an artist, that's, I don't know, it's not really as masculine. It wasn't back then. So uh, <laughs> I, I could I could kind of I could kind of swing it, I believe, you know, be cool, uh, creative, and maybe wear a couple funky clothes or whatever and and, and still be myself. So uh, Well you've got a style, obviously. You can tell you you know yeah. you got that. I mean you're looking good. Well, um, you. tell me about the decision as an adult though to make this your livelihood, to make this your lifelong journey. Was that difficult to come to? Because you know, you hear the you hear the, the term starving artist. <laughs> um, and so and it's real. I know a lot of artists that are talented that are literally doing a million different other things instead of their in addition to their art. What was that right. like for you as an adult? Did you have to dabble in other things until you got established? What was your process? My process is still I have a main gig and my art is my second main gig. So it's like two careers. Um, and it's kind of been that way. And it was challenging because uh, there were some things I wanted to try to follow through in college um, and whatnot. And so what happened was it just kind of just morphed as I had a full-time gig, I had a lot of commission uh, opportunities. So when people look at my portfolio and uh, website, they'll see a lot of different subject matters because that's I've been doing commission art predominantly from well actually from high school uh, tell them what commission art means I know what that means but I don't right. know it's just pretty much where it'd be like you say Emmanuel I love your your work uh, I love something special done in my my spot uh, this is what I'm thinking um, what you know can we let me uh, collaborate and work something out and usually it's, what a, it's usually a one of a like it's yeah. something that somebody says, this is what I want. Yes. You're the creative, make it look good. And I'm going to yes. pay you to make it look good because I want it on my wall or on my table, depending on what kind exactly. of art it is. Exactly. 
Was that scary the first time you got one of those? No. Um, fortunately, uh, my my junior high school teacher kind of broke the ice. It was actually, uh, I want to say what, well, actually my first mural, I was 13. Uh, somebody, I know, it's I know, it's crazy. And um, the crazy meaning that I, I look back and can't believe it, but the local newspaper did a story and I got that. And it was a um, really nice uh, beauty salon uptown, my hometown. And somebody told her about me and I, um, mom, <laughs> he would drop me off after school about two hours and I would do, you know, I'd work on it and pick me up and, um, if I didn't have practice and do homework and whatever, it might have been what eight feet by I don't know maybe seven feet. I have photos wow. of it. And then my art teacher Robert Spencer uh, included me in on a baptistry uh, mural for a church, and um, of course he did predominantly most of it and showed me, um, you know, just by by example how to follow through. And then it it just started spreading out. A science teacher I think who was. Uh, my football coach uh, in junior high, uh, he commissioned me to do uh, two Ninja Turtle per, uh, two Ninja Turtle paintings for his, uh, I think it was his nephews. And so this confidence was building and then um, other opportunities, uh, mural at a you know, local restaurant. Uh, then I started doing murals in homes. I had one where I set up scaffolds because my uncle was in uh, stucco. So I used his scaffolds and the walls are 20 feet high. And um, <laughs> So I set up like scaffolds, two stories high, made a wood plane because uh, I'd learned carpentry and things through my dad's business when he was a contractor and uh, and just had him help me set it up. And it just, I guess once I'm finding, if you got the basis, I know the basis of your gift and you just merge uh, faith, confidence, and then you may ask, get questions from others to help you along. Confidence and everything, right? Like it is. the, the, the it practice. Is. How, when so you mentioned acrylic, what describe for the audience your genre? How would you describe your art? Wow, that's uh, right. I'm gonna try to narrow that down as much as I can. So, I mean, if you look behind me, yes, see. I'm gonna make you front and center so people can see. So, this is uh, let me get my my bands here together. Y'all bear with me. Okay, right here, here. So, if this is acrylic piece here, uh, this is what I consider my style when I'm not um, doing commission artwork. Um, correlation of brass subject matter, maybe jazz subjects, anatomy and roses. Um, and because acrylic is so forgiving, uh, doesn't take as long to dry as um, oils. I can do mixed media. Um, I can move a little, little uh, work on different surfaces and uh, really get the kind of effect that I want. But it's a water base. It's a step up from watercolor. So and, beautiful. Um, well, thank you. Thank you. And as you can see, most of the pieces like this, your eyes are either going to go in circles or from top to bottom. That's people's mindset in the West. They read left to right or their eyes top to bottom. So a lot of my pieces uh, that are what I call my work when I'm not doing commission pieces, it's the basis of uh, kind of Really, uh, what I do, you know, such piece of this, top to bottom. I mean, um, you know. Wow, that's beautiful. So, thank you. Tell us about that piece. I show where I get the clouds and lean it. So, top to bottom. So, this piece, the title is This Is You. And it talks about a perspective of um, a child in the womb with, binoc with a binocular. And he is actually seeing through uh, the belly of. Uh, you know, his, his mother looking at a letter, pretty much, which the letter is from from heaven. It's from the creator, for lack of a better word. And it's giving uh, the child the creator's perspective of himself. A lot of times, even, you know, parents, family members, they may not really understand the children and know really the proper gifts, talents or the callings. And I think that's one of the things if we uh, can instill in our children, our youth, um, more of a more of a divine perspective where they can understand That's themselves. Amazing. That is okay. So, what's what was the impetus behind it? What was the motivation? Did impetus? I like that word. I don't know if I've heard that word before. Yeah. Right? So motivation. <laughs> Sorry, that old school twenty five okay. cent word. Okay, I'm behind. I'm behind then. Um, the motivation. It was really just my upbringing. Uh, upbringing and kind of what's going on now. How 
the masses in uh, social media, um, unfortunately, are uh, redefining youth and individuals, or shall I say, we are allowing it to. So I believe if you really know your who you are um, intentionally, you know, from a creative's perspective, it'll cut out a lot of other things. If you don't get the support, uh, maybe not totally influenced or swayed by society and it'll help you really form who you really are. So I had different languages on there. So where it says, this is you, the very top in English, it's got about seven different languages, which means wow. that that appeals to any child on this earth. Um, I won't use race because race wasn't, but na nations or uh, tribes per se, that covers everybody. So that's the perspective because we're all human beings. We just have different shells. A shell is just different but our core is, is the same. So it's really just getting a true perspective of yourself and not through, we love our athletes, we love our entertainers, we love, you know, but uh, if you have a really know who you are and uh, the true core of knowing who you are, you, you know, you, I think you, you're healthier mentally um, and even able to really grasp hold what you're, what would you call to do? So, um, yeah. Want it? I mean, would you prefer me to leave? Yes. Can you hear me? <laughs> we got somebody in the background. He's a good oh. guy. He's trying to help out. Okay. Um, I've got a question for you. Sure. Fourth down dam. We have a whole bunch of questions about that because they can see it in the yeah. site. <laughs> yeah. So tell me. Well, Leon Cersei uh, played with Miami. Uh, he was a lineman, played a uh, uh, lineman for uh, Jimmy Johnson and Miami University back in the late 80s. First round pick, I think it was in 93, I think, as a lineman, one of the highest paid linemen to be uh, drafted from University of Miami to the Jacksonville Jaguars. Well, we, my buddy Bobby Morgan uh, linked us up, and this is one of his autobiographies that came out last November. Talking about his life, yeah, this is one that's signed, and uh, this is a trilogy. 9 by 12, original painting. You can see that behind me here. Um, he has the first one. And it's just um, for those who are big fans of uh, Leon Searcy and um, it's one of the situations where this is like a custom memorabilia type of uh, display case. The top part of the case is not on because it had glare all over the place. But that's what this <laughs> is. Yeah. So uh, this is one of the scenarios that if there are some True Leon Cersei fans out there, uh, that's available. And that's one of the other things that I'm going to be doing is um, a painting, a signed artifact, and different stats for those who may be sports lovers or aficionados where they can um, have something unique in their man cave. Um, What's the so ultimate goal for you on your painting? Are you, um, obviously all artists, you have to birth it, right? So it's a right. baby. It's it's, right. it's it's gotta come out of you in one way, shape, or form. Right. Uh, what's the ultimate goal for your art? Are you wanting to expand into different genres? Do you experiment? We had a somebody question. Um, right. You said acrylic, but do you do only acrylic? Uh, give us a little bit of your process and what you want to accomplish in 2021 and where you're headed. That's a big one right there. <clears throat> so I have a I have a nonprofit. That uh, by the end of the year, I want it to be up and going, um, you know, full time as far as my vision. My vision is really just as myself, giving other, you know, uh, young budding artists or those who just want to be creative an opportunity to express themselves by way of uh, be giving the tools um, from like a beginner's perspective. Um, so I have actually uh, the website for that and it's up for uh, investors. And so my goal is, is really to let that be a full-time situation to where uh, the community can be involved and uh, also could have instructors come in and share even maybe, uh, there may be recording artists, um, different dancers, uh, those who do pottery, even business to uh, give a perspective to the young people like I had where they can be able to express themselves. Maybe they can see something they can identify with that um, can follow them to pursue a career. It may not be in the creative side, but for me, art allowed me to open up, allowed me to dream, allowed me to think outside of the box. That's one of the visions I have. 
Um, and then um, I have a, a company that makes uh, museum reproductions of my work. So another thing is having maybe a series of seven like vision nice. arts. Seven. Yeah. And it's uh, the certified, I think one of the four, only four certified um, archiving places in the state of Georgia. Uh, and you'll get a certificate, um, but maybe just additions of seven and two sizes. Um, and that's hence, you know, Vision Art 7. Um, this is, uh, that design was something that came up with back in high school. I love it. It's eyeball, eyeball that lines up with the word vision. You got the uh, paintbrush, which is the eyebrow, which lines up with the word. Uh, there it is. Nice. And then you have number seven. If I can get my paper right here. Number seven, which is, again, at the end, uh, you're reading left to right. And number seven, to me, uh, is excellence. So vision art says what I'm always pursuing. Um, and in the same Can people buy your work online? How do, how do people get to you? We've got those questions coming. Is vision art seven the best to start? Go to my website. There's uh, my email. They can email me from there. Uh, there's also uh, the link with my um, Instagram. Uh, you can see videos and uh, progressive videos and also a YouTube link uh, so they can kind of see the process. People like to see the process. They like to see. Um, we love the process. Yeah. We also love the story. When I was at the yeah. art show, I'll buy a piece if I know the story behind right. it. It just right. adds to the whole vision of the art. I. I there's an artist called Tarkai that we love, and the story behind the way that he paints, he's an old sort of master, not technically, but close. Um, but when people hear your story, I'm, I'm motivated, and of course I'd want to buy your art knowing why you painted this, what's the why? We talked about the why on a show earlier. What's your why, what motivated you, what, what possessed you to paint this, Emmanuel? Um, Strong so word. I love the fact that you share your story. And right. I think a lot of people just look at a piece of art. Um, guys, we're not talking about beach condo art here. We're talking about sure. nothing against that. Right. Uh, we're talking about somebody who pours their heart and soul in. There's a reason, yeah. there's a passion. This is not produced for selling for a beach condo. This is produced because Emmanuel has his passion about what yeah. That's the sole thing. It's uh, it kind of <laughs> made a deal with the creator, uh, like you know, it's 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 a, it's a responsibility that you know that I paint uh, from the time I leave this world. That's whatever cash flow comes in or doesn't, fame or not, and um, so that's the motivation. I have laws when I have a, you know, maybe go a couple weeks, whatever. But I don't think in my whole life that I've went no longer than four months, even just with you know uh, things from back in the day, divorce and other things, uh, because it was very medicinal to me. Uh, it, it spoke to me and also uh, as it spoke to other people. So it just, it just won't go away. And your work so, is absolutely Thank you. Thank All you. right, so just repeat what I said earlier. What's the best way for people to reach you, find out about your art, purchase your art, talk to you about commissioning a piece of art. What's the best way? This is Vision Art 7, V I S I O N Art 7.com. Um, there's all my links are on there. You can also, YouTube is the same thing, Vision Art 7. And uh, usually you can just email me and uh, we can collaborate back and forth through email, more of one on one. I'm not the, you can't go in there and just click a button and it's shipped to you. Uh, it's usually a situation where we email and talk and discuss things. And uh, so those are the two. I'm on Facebook too, under my name, Elijah Wilson, which I have a manual here. That's just a story. Emmanuel's my middle name. Elijah's my first name. I'm the first one. You have a big Elijah. story. I know. So it's a situation to where I don't know if I was just so happy that they were able to spell my that name because it was the longest in grade school. But my family, friends, colleagues, everybody, they, they've always called me by Emmanuel unless I'm, it's a situation of someone having a line up documentation and they call me my first name. So, uh, but my dad, yeah, he, uh, he gave me both those names and, uh, they're beautiful. Well, thank you. Names. A lot of responsibility that comes with it, but, um, yeah, vision art seven, V I S I O N art com. YouTube also just same thing. Vision art seven. And, uh, it was and, awesome, man. Your stuff you. is 
Thank Absolutely you. beautiful. I'm going to give them one like parting shot so they can see a bigger yes. shot of it. To the side. Gorgeous. I love the colors. Thank you. Thank you. You guys, reach out and support our artists. It was a crazy 2020 for them. We're all trying to come back. And we all know the arts change lives. And so I'm very thankful you got on the show. You maneuvered through all that stuff. Your stuff's you. absolutely beautiful. And I appreciate you being on here, my friend. Reach out to Emmanuel Wilson, visionart7.com. Thank See you, you guys later. Thank you for being on the show and thank you for sharing your journey. Thank it's you. Awesome. Me. All right, guys. It. See you later. Bye.